Hi, my name's Katie and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about the six different types of Mbuna that I keep and order them from the most peaceful to the most aggressive. The way that I've ordered them is based on two things. It's how territorial they are and how often I've seen them interact with other fish in a way that is peaceful versus a way that is aggressive. I've got a mixed species tank of peacocks, haps and embuna, but I wanted to focus more specifically on the embuna for this one, just in case anyone's interested in adding some embuna to your tank or getting some more and you're looking for ones that are on the more peaceful, kind of safer side. One thing that I will add is that I only keep one of each type because just like other African cichlids, Mbuna are known for conspecific aggression, which means they tend to pick on fish that look the same as them. So if you want to stay on the safer side, it's also best to just keep one of each different type of variety, unless you're specifically looking at starting up a breeding tank and you know the different ratios and genders of the Mbuna that you're keeping. If you're finding my content to be helpful and you're enjoying it, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and give this video a like. And without further ado, let's get into the video. Number one is the Yellow Lab Embuna, also known as the Electric Yellow Embuna. The Yellow Lab Embuna is a smaller sized Embuna growing up to about four inches in size. These guys are well known for being on the more placid and peaceful side compared to all other African or Lake Malawi cichlids. They look quite different to the other types of Mbuna. You'll notice that they have quite a slender body and also a more pointy mouth compared to some of the other types. The reason for this is that these fish can tolerate a more carnivorous diet. In Lake Malawi, they will actually graze on things like crustaceans, things like small snails and baby fish. These guys in the female and male variety can be quite stunning and colorful. So if you're looking to add something that is really pretty and bright to your tank, but also something that's gonna be on the more peaceful side, these guys can be a really good option for that. Number two is the Yellowtail Assay. This one is one of my absolute favorites and it's also the largest Mbuna that I have and the one that will grow the largest. These guys grow up to about six inches in length and they're relatively peaceful. I've never seen my one be aggressive in any way to any of the other fish that it lives with. Their colors can be quite striking as well. They've got this beautiful blue body and the yellow fins, and they can also sometimes shine a little bit of a purple kind of violet hue as well. I find that my yellowtail Asai has grown quite quickly, and it's also one of the more active fish that I have. It's often grazing on algae throughout the day, and it will happily swim up and down the tank too, and be a bit of an open water swimmer compared to the other Embuna. So if you're looking for an Embuna that is on the larger side, and something that is going to be quite beautiful, whether it's male or female, then you might really like to add a yellowtail Asai to your tank. Number three is the Red Zebra Embuna. This guy is also on the more medium to larger size. They get to about five inches in length and it would probably be my third largest Mbuna that I have. I found this guy to be relatively friendly. It tends to also be more of an open water swimmer and doesn't dwell around the rocks as much as something like the Yellow Lab does. I've seen it chase other fish every now and then, particularly actually more when it was a juvenile because it outgrew the other fish and it, when it was the largest fish, it tended to be more aggressive towards the other species. But now that the other fish have caught up, I don't really see that as often. It kind of just looks a bit dopey, I find, and just swims around the tank and really minds its own business. It's also a really big algae grazer, like the yellowtail Asai, and likes to pick on algae from the rocks throughout the day. Also, another really bright and beautiful fish, very colorful, very active, and I haven't had any huge aggression issues with it. Number four is the red top Hongi. This one's personally one of my favorite of all of the Ambuna because I think that its colors are very striking and very beautiful. I'm not sure whether mine is male or female, but even when I got it as a juvenile, it was quite colorful. The reason that I've put this guy at number four is because it can be quite territorial. 
it doesn't tend to swim up and down as much as the other Ambuna, such as the Asai or the Red Zebra Ambuna. It tends to stay in its rocky cave and it doesn't like other fish coming too close to it. When I say it's aggressive, I mean that it'll just chase other fish away from its territory every now and then, but its territory is quite small and it doesn't do anything more than just give a bit of a warning bite or chase the fish just for a little bit. It will sometimes swap its territory too, I've noticed, depending on if there's too much going around, um, going on around where its little cave is. So sometimes it'll be in one cave, then the next day it's in a different one. It also tends to keep to itself and it's got some of the more interesting behavior compared to some of the other Ambuna because it's very much like a coral reef fish where it tends to dart in and out of the rocks. And having those beautiful colorations as well, I think it makes for a really nice fish. They grow up to about four inches in size, so not quite as big as some of the other Ambuna. Number five is my OB zebra. OB just stands for orange blotch. So it's similar to my red zebra, but it's a hybrid. So an orange blotched variety. The orange blotch varieties tend to have that kind of merle color and they've got you know, splashes of different types of color all over them. My one is a very pale one. You sometimes get ones that have a lot more red or a lot more orange in them, similar to the red zebra. This one I've put at number five, purely because I've witnessed more aggression towards other fish with this one. The reason I believe this is, is because I have OB peacocks in my tank as well. And with the conspecific aggression stuff, when it sees the OB peacocks, I think that it feels threatened by them. And so it has a go at them sometimes. So I have seen this one kind of puff up and have a go at other fish and display, I guess, more aggression compared to some of the other Ambuna. I do wonder though if that would be different if I didn't have the OB peacocks in my tank. So that is something to consider. Overall though, it's still not super aggressive. I've never seen it kill another fish. I've never seen it bite another fish. I've just seen it be more relentless when it comes to chasing other fish away and putting on a bit of a display, trying to kind of almost puff itself up and show off its fins and stuff to some of the other fish in the tank. I've also found that it's probably one of the more confident and outgoing Ambuna that I have. It's always looking to see what's going on. Now, lastly, number six is my Bumblebee Ambuna. This guy is very interesting. They can change color rapidly. So you'll see them go from this stripy, orangey, brown, kind of black color to where they can make their whole body almost a dark brown, black color. Interestingly, the reason for this is that in Lake Malawi, they tend to eat parasites off a larger catfish and the catfish knows that they help them and they have a symbiotic relationship with them. However, they have been observed as well going into the caves where the catfish lay their eggs and they'll turn this dark brown black color and will actually steal some of their eggs. They'll also change color and become quite pale as well if they're stressed out or if something's upset them. I've put this one as the most aggressive Ambuna that I have for a few reasons. I used to have another Bumblebee Ambuna and they would lock lips all of the time and that one actually ended up passing away and I'm pretty sure it was probably stress and aggression related that that happened. The other reason is it's quite bulky and big. This one also grows up to about six inches in size. So it has the tendency and the ability and size to be a bully towards other fish because you will find that it gets quite big quite quickly. And so you risk it outgrowing some of your smaller fish and then being quite dominant. In general, it's still rel relatively calm in my tank and I haven't had any huge problems with it other than its aggression towards the other bumblebee Ambuna that I had. But I have still seen it chase other fish from time to time and be a little bit aggressive. But I do find that it will be on the bottom around the sand more of the time and it's kind of more aware of what the other fish are doing. My Ambunas such as the SA and the Red Zebra, they tend to go up and down, but they don't show a lot of attention towards the other fish. Whereas the Bumblebee Ambuna I find does tend to pay attention and look at what's going on. And it will sometimes have a territory that it likes to defend. I hope that you found this video to be helpful and it gave you a little bit of insight into the Ambuna that I keep in my fish tank and some ideas for Ambuna that you might like to add to your African cichlid tank as well. 
If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you've got any recommendations as well, please leave those and let me know if you've got any of these Ambuna and if your experience has been similar to mine with the different types of varieties. Again, if you're liking this content, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and give this video a like. And I will see you in the next video.